thank you for joining us for breakout sessions. Uh, just excited about being able to, to host this event. This is actually uh, number two of breakout sessions. Uh, last week, we actually covered uh, a couple topics. Uh, and, and one of those is getting into God's original intent, the kingdom of God. Just really excited about, you know, really allowing this to, to, to grow uh, and not necessarily in size, but size is great, but more is growing together, getting comfortable enough with each other to be able to ask uh, really honest questions and to be able to, to provide what we believe uh, the responses that we need to, re to, to be, you know, to respond to those things. Sometimes we get in atmospheres where we're not nearly as comfortable as we need to. So some of those questions don't get asked. So we want to make sure that this is an opportunity to be able to do that. So with breakout sessions specifically, uh, then we are going to tackle some different things that we may not necessarily address on Thursday nights. On Thursday nights, the goal is to be more of a class uh, atmosphere. Uh, and this is not necessarily as much. Uh, Emerson, I'm I'm leaning heavily on Emerson to, to really set the pace uh, for what we're doing here. So I'm not going to really uh, hold anything back. I do some housekeeping type things. One is is that if you are not speaking, I just ask that you have your your mic on mute. Uh, you could be dialing in uh, through your phone directly, or it could be online or through your cell phone. So just mute yourself out. If by chance I I mute you out because I hear background noise, no big deal. It's, it's no harm. It's just a case where I want to keep the background noise down. So make sure you unmute yourself to be able to speak. We also have a chat box. So I encourage that if you are online or with, on your cell phone, then use, use that. It's a really, really good opportunity to put scriptures in there, ask questions. It's just all types of really good stuff. So keep an eye out uh, on the chat box if you're able to do that. So with that being said, then we're going to go ahead and get into our material, material for tonight. Uh, Emerson, I'm not sure exactly how you would like to open up uh, today. I know that at some point, uh, we did end uh, with the question about a scripture, and I will have that up on the screen when the time comes. So you just decide how you would like to, to start us out tonight. All right, great. Okay. Hey, thank you very much, Corey. I want to thank everybody for joining us. As I said, we're uh, trying to go ahead and dive right into it. So I would love to spend time with preliminaries, but it's gonna we're going to start throwing right here in main event, and uh, we're about to hit the bell, and here we go. And so First of all, I'd like to everybody to come into agreement that the Holy Spirit, uh, you're welcome here this evening. Without you, we can do nothing. We don't try to do anything without you. We set an atmosphere that's conducive uh, to what you have to be done, what you have to be said, and uh, revelation knowledge uh, that we, we need it comes from you. And so as we join ourselves together in agreement, saying, Holy Spirit, have your way. Uh, we turn our, our, our wills and we turn our lives over to you. Uh, each and every minute of the day and we do that now in jesus name we thank you amen and amen all right great hey listen we have uh, uh pastor mark and his uh, lovely wife on the line with us this evening we have brother Corey I, that i know of uh we have Lionel uh that i know of. if there's anyone else uh please uh now is the time to introduce yourself so i'm going to take a quick second and allow anyone else to please if you're on here please let us know uh, notify us uh, by introducing uh, yourself if you would. So I'll take a quick minute for that to happen and we'll do it now. And I know that uh, my mother-in-law, Beverly um, Jackson is actually, she's actually uh, on here. She may not say anything right now, but I know, <clears throat> excuse me, that I see that she's on there. Okay, great, great, wonderful. Listen, just wanted to give someone, uh, somebody a minute, and if you don't want to say anything, that's fine. If you do, that's good, too. But okay, we're about to get into it. Uh, uh, as Corey had mentioned, uh, this is a breakout session, and that's what we do. We, we're going to break out, and we've been to uh, uh, talk about the things uh, we often – We I think, uh, Corey, go ahead and put that, that uh, question that you were referring to that we were on uh, last week, and I can't see it, so you'll have to read it. Uh, please, go, would yeah. you do that now? All Absolutely. Right, and, and for anybody that was with us last week, then we did uh, focus on a scripture found in Acts chapter 28. And also it uh, looks like it begins in verse 30 and, and, and goes to verse 31. And it reads, and Paul dwelt two whole years in his own hired house and received all that came in unto him, preaching the kingdom of God and teaching those things which concern the Lord Jesus Christ with all confidence, no man forbidding him. So the question uh, that we offered was, uh, is there a difference between 
the preaching of Jesus Christ and actually uh, what Jesus preached or preaching Jesus Christ and actually preaching what Jesus preached. And I know Emerson, uh, what, what was the way that you actually said that last week, Emerson, to make sure I, I, I say that correctly? This is going to be our question on the table. That's right, Corey. Thank you so much, my friend. Uh, it is this. We often hear people preaching the message of Jesus. But as they preach the message of Jesus, are they preaching the message that Jesus preached? Is there a difference between preaching the message of Jesus and then preaching the message that Jesus uh, preached? So uh, what I do, I have my good friend, uh, many years on here, Pastor Mark Burroughs and his wife, uh, Ramona Burroughs. And so uh, at this particular time, I would really like to call on him to, for his take on that and uh, anything else that he may have to add on that. So, Pastor Mark, please, uh, the floor is yours. Take it from here, please. Okay. Hey, listen, uh, just, just thanks so much, Chair. Just to go right at it, um, you know, that's a, that's a great question. Uh, in looking at the life of Jesus and what Jesus did and what he taught, there was absolute congruence in it. Um, when we read about Jesus, and I think uh, last week, I don't know if it was Corey's mother-in-law or his mom, but um, she made reference to John 1.1, 1, 1, how it says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Uh, he was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him uh, was nothing, nothing was made that was made, and him was life, and the life was the light of men. And so uh, I know that sometimes in the way that men teach, we sometimes can parse things out and segment and fragment things uh, where Jesus is concerned and put them in pieces and box boxes. But uh, I don't know that we can really do that because uh, you can't talk about Jesus we talk about without talking about the fact that he's a king, without talking about the fact that he's a savior, that he's a Lord, that he's an advocate, he's a judge, he's a high priest. And so to truly preach the message of Jesus and to preach what Jesus preached, you have to both talk about Jesus and what he did and what Jesus taught. To do so and to fragment it into pieces is to uh, not complete, not not to is is to not completely preach either Jesus or the message that Jesus preached. So it's, it's, it's very important when it talks about um, in Him was life, and the life was the light of men. Uh, that the, the totality of Jesus's life, what he did, what he taught from coming and being conceived in the womb of Mary, uh, humbling himself and taking that on to, uh, you know, being born of a woman and walking out and growing in a flesh and blood body, just like uh, you and I have, and uh, yet executing perfectly the will of God in all of the full invested authority of what a man, a being created in the image and likeness of God is created to be and to do. And so it is unfortunate that men sometimes do uh, preach Jesus, but do not uh, convey the same things that he said, but to truly preach Jesus is to both preach him and the message that he preached. So I gave you John 1, but then look at 1 John 1. Here's what the Apostle John further says uh, in 1 John 1, 1. He said, that which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, was not just what they heard, but what they saw, which we have looked upon, our hands have handled concerning the word of life. The life was manifested, we have seen and bear witness and declare to you that eternal life, talking about the Lord Jesus, which was with the Father and was manifest to us. 
that what we have seen and heard, we declare to you that your fellowship, that you may have fellowship, verse 3, 1 John 1, with us. And truly, our fellowship is with uh, the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. And so, um, you know, there are many things that are said about Jesus. Uh, however, we're told in Hebrews chapter 13 that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Now, that means that what he was, he is, and he is to come. He says, I'm the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end, you know, and so uh, he is unchanging. He was manifest to us and revealed to us, but he was in the beginning. But he came on this earth and walked in flesh and blood. He talked about things and revealed things uh, to us in his time on earth based upon what the disciples could hear. Because he said plainly in St. John 16, I have many things to say to you, but right now you are not able to bear them. You can't hear them, but I'm going to send you my spirit. And when he comes, he will not speak of himself, but he will testify of me. He will take of mine and he will reveal it to you. Uh, all that the father has is mine. Therefore, I said he will take of what is mine and he will reveal it to you. And so when we talk about Jesus, we have to also include his life and everything he said and did to include what he said before he left and went to the cross, what he said after he got up, and then what he said about what would come after he departed. And so uh, in simple terms, and gave a lot of background and, and, and underpinning to it. But the bottom line is, no, you cannot divest the message of Jesus uh, from the message that Jesus preached any more than you can preach the message that Jesus preached without talking about Jesus. And we had a few uh, individuals that were able to, to jump in since you began to get started, uh, Pastor Mark. So I want to make sure that they are brought up to speed because they probably came in while you were actually sharing what you were sharing. So I, I really appreciate it. it. Looks like we had uh, Adrian uh, uh, Abrams actually joined in. Looks like Keith M is what it shows on my end. And my wife actually jumped in. And Emerson, if you don't mind, if you could just repeat uh the the statement the way that you said it that way it, it makes sense kind of what they were hearing as far as what pastor mark was saying great uh and and then i want to give them opportunity to introduce themselves before we continue to go forward wonderful what what pastor mark was talking about the question that i posed was this uh oftentimes people preach jesus but they don't preach the message that jesus preached is that possible and can that be done that was the question and that was pastor mark's answer uh, for those that are going in. And now you go ahead, Corey, and let them uh, jump in and introduce yourself. Yeah, absolutely. And I just want to give you an opportunity. Uh, uh, we're glad to have you. Uh, this is breakout sessions. It is an open uh, platform. The goal is that we can come in comfortably. And uh, and we really should be all in, in this uh, setting uh, seeking uh, to know more, learn more about the kingdom of God. And it's just an opportunity to ask questions and to provide some, uh, some different things that we, we would like to in dealing with that. So uh, the scripture focus that you see there on the screen, if you're here online, is in Acts chapter 28, verses 30 through 31. And it says, and Paul dwelt two whole years in his own hired house and received all that came unto him, preaching the kingdom of God and teaching those things which concern the Lord Jesus Christ with all confidence, no man forbidding him. So I want to give you an opportunity, if you'd like to introduce yourself, uh, you can do that. Uh, also, if you would like to you know, give any comment uh, about that, then you feel free to do that. If not, then I'll turn it back over to Emerson just for a moment. But I do want to give you an opportunity. Is there is there uh, anyone that would like to introduce themselves or say anything at this point before we move forward? Boy, I'm out here in uh, Mesa, Arizona. Happy, happy to join this evening. Awesome. I know. Sorry about that, Keith. It looks like you were breaking up just a little bit. Well, we were glad, uh, glad to have you. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. A anyone else uh, like to introduce themselves or say anything before before we move forward?
All right. So if you don't mind, Emerson, I know you were very excited about a uh, you know, conversation that you and Pastor Mark had after we actually uh, were together uh, last week. And you said, man, I really like to have Pastor Mark come in and share uh, some things that he shared with me during our conversation. Do you mind after listening to what Pastor Mark said? Could you tell us you know, something you'd like to pull out from what he said or, or, or add some things to, to what, what you would like uh, to, to be heard from from that? By all means, oh, by all means, uh, as, as Corey just mentioned, uh, that's exactly what took place. And that's what I passed on. And I think it was just a wealth of knowledge and, and, and understanding wisdom and uh, revelation knowledge was given. And so let's let's if, if we could go here real quick and uh, want to talk about this. Uh, Pastor Mark, uh, you mentioned something last time we had talked uh, in this in this particular uh, in this area of uh, conversation that we had about identity and how valuable it was uh, for an individual to to get their identity correct in order to understand the kingdom. Uh, I hope I'm putting it right. If not, clean that up. Uh, could you could you go there for a moment and 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 then hit that uh, if you could, please? Yes, sir. Certainly, uh, my privilege. Um, so you know, we we're talking about origins, and uh, I too share, and oftentimes in my instruction, teaching, or whatever, in my learning. I, I always reference back to the origin of things, and it begins with Genesis 1, and 1 in the beginning, God. And so any understanding of anything begins with God. And of course, as we just shared from John 1, St. John 1, 1, that in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God, uh, saying he was in the beginning with God. And so... Um, Everything that God designed came out of uh, the Godhead, the Father, the Word, as we know, and the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost. Uh, we often refer to it as the Trinity, but it's really the Godhead. Now, the Godhead said, and I believe the Father speaking at the time, in Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, let us make man in our image and our likeness. That's the crux of his whole plan. The crux of his entire plan for the earth and for the world and for us in time uh, is from, yes, he systematically created and restored the worlds and produced everything, putting its seed in itself that it would produce after its kind. If you read through Genesis 1, 1, all the way down through 26, you see over and over again, he created everything, the seed bearing, and it had its seed in itself. But when it came to man, he said in this same pattern of, of producing what he wanted by placing a seed in it, creating it, as he purposed and designed it and investing a seed in it such that it would perpetuate itself. That's exactly what he did when he created man, as he desired to perpetuate the kingdom. Someone used the word colonize the earth, uh, but to reproduce his culture and government and order in the earth, he created us, mankind, in his image and in his likeness. And so that is the crux of any kingdom understanding is that I am created in the image and likeness of God. And we know that Jesus is a king uh, and uh, that, that he is God and beside him there's no other. He's a Lord. He's the king of kings. He's the Lord of lords. And so our vested identity in being created in the image and likeness of God is wholly and completely after the exact order and design of God himself. Nothing else can be discovered. Nothing else can be embraced, realized, or walked out until we accept, embrace, identify fully with this truth. And, uh, and so uh, as, we, as we talk about uh, rediscovering the kingdom, walking out the kingdom, living the kingdom, uh, returning to the original uh, intent of the kingdom. Well, we know that when Jesus came into the earth in Matthew 4, 17, he began to say, repent for the kingdom is at hand. 
Now, you know, as we try to understand and discover what that means to us, um, connect with the truth of the repentance and the kingdom being at hand, I believe what he was saying to us is that the way you have looked at yourself, the way you have seen the order of life, the way you have seen things in general, you need to turn from that now so I may restore the full order of what we intended when I say we, Father, the Word, and the Spirit from the beginning. And so uh, we understand from Romans chapter 8 and verse 29 that those who God foreknew and the foreknowledge of God is exactly what uh, calls him to say in Genesis chapter 1 verse 26, let us make man in our image and likeness and let them have dominion, you know, over the fish of the sea, the fowl of the air, and the earth, and every creeping thing, and be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth, all those things in Genesis chapter 1, 20, verse 26 through 28. And so, but it all begins and everything else where the kingdom, uh, and I was walking the kingdom out, uh, is concerned, it begins with understanding. I'm made in the image and likeness of God. So it's not hard to believe that uh, I am to operate in as a king. He has a kingdom. I'm created in his likeness. And therefore, the authority of God, uh, the character of God, the nature of God, the wisdom of, part of God, the power of God, everything that God is, is what he formed and created me, you, us, everyone, to know, to be, and to do. And so uh, knowing, being, and doing begins with that origin, that we are, we are made in the image and likeness of God. All right, wonderful, brother. So let me uh, get it clear on my end. So listen, let me, it's going to be hard for me to understand this kingdom stuff if I don't first understand that I'm a king. Jesus Christ, he mentioned that scripture. Let's don't run past that one. King of kings. King of kings. He didn't say king of a sinner saved by grace. He didn't say king that, uh, as, I went, as I often say, I fell in love with Jesus and I went to church and got messed up. So when I say I went to church and got messed up, that means I wasn't taught that I was a king. I was taught that I was just a sinner saved by grace. I was taught that I'm coming up the rough side of the mountain and I'm doing my best to make it in, you know. And so that was the mindset that I had. But until I begin to talk with uh, some brothers, a revelation of the Holy Spirit has given me, I understand now that I'm a king. And guess what? It's changed my mindset. My identity has been changed. I used to think that I was a crackhead for years because that's what I was called. You understand what I'm saying? So until my identity begins to change, until I grab the piece of this, that I am a king. And so I must operate like a king. I must breathe as a king. I eat as a king. I think as a king. I handle my business as a king. I understand that. And the king has a kingdom. And we know that that kingdom is here on earth. And so this is the kingdom that I operate in. I believe that, that, that God has made us kings. He's made us all kings. And so you must identify with that. Uh, Pastor Mark, real quick. Is that what you're saying? Absolutely. And, and you know, the unfortunate thing, I, I listen and I hear, and we, we talk about church and we talk about religion and, um, and, and the damaging things that church and religion can, can do. Let, let me say this, that the true church, the body and bones of the Lord Jesus Christ, says what he says. They teach, they talk about both Jesus, the message of Jesus, and what Jesus said. Because the body of Jesus understands that these two, these things are inextricably linked. And so uh, when we talk about, you know, uh, being a king, it's unfortunate that uh, impure religion, and uh, of uh, a incomplete understanding of the fact that as the church, we are members of his flesh and of his bones and of his body is what it says in Ephesians chapter five, I think about the 27th verse. So if that's the case, it is not pious. It is not holy. It is not humble for me to think of myself 
and speak of myself any differently than the way I think and speak of Jesus. Because if I am in him, when I put myself down, I'm putting him down. I'm saying in effect that what he did is incomplete and not enough. That his whole sacrifice and offering to make me a new creation uh, in him is insufficient. It's, it's lacking. I'm weak. I'm sinful. I am not righteous. I'm, I'm, I'm weak. You know, that is not what Jesus taught. No, Jesus' teaching in St. John 14, 12 says, whoever believes on me, the works and the things that I do, they're going to do also. And they're going to do even greater works because I'm going to my Father. And believing on him is not just simply saying, I believe that Jesus Christ uh, came, died for my sins, and, and rose again, and, and now I'm saved. Now is everything that he came to bring to bear, the full restitution of God's original design and order of creating us in his image and likeness to restore that to us completely. And I would say at an even better position than we were originally in uh, with the first Adam in the garden, uh, to what the last Adam, Jesus, is made to us. Because now what he has been made to us can never be lost. Because God made the covenant with him and he did what he did and he made us who he made us, gave us what he gave us and provided and made us those things. And all of them are in, with, by, and through Christ. And so the only way we can ever lose them is for Christ to be defeated, to be diminished, for him to suffer to be weakened. Amen. Amen. Excellent, brother. So see, this, this is what this is about. This is what Corey, uh, myself, uh, Pastor Mark, those of you that were seeking kingdom understanding, kingdom knowledge, kingdom wisdom, this is what that's about. And so this is this is this is such a powerful programming. I'm I'm thankful, so thankful. Let me take a moment here for for my brother Corey who has has, has pricked something in me, provoked me. Uh, oftentimes I I didn't really understand because I had teaching of impure religion, and anytime you begin to get that, bro, you're gonna have to you're gonna have to lose that in order to even begin to even be interested in this. Because he, he immediately, impure religion does it, it it does exactly what Pastor Mark just said. It 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 knocks out the kingdom. Uh, there's a scripture that Corey uh, often says, and uh, I would love to hear, uh, but let me, let me just stop for a moment and let me take some time to see if anybody else has a comment. They want to say anything real quick or anything that you have. So I'm going to give the floor up for a moment. So please, anybody, if you have anything to say, uh, we're going to let you do it right now. So go ahead, please. Hey, this is Adrian. I just have a couple of questions. Um, First of all, thanks for it. Uh, thanks you, Emerson, for inviting me. Uh, the first question is, is I heard Pastor Mark speak of the original intent of the kingdom. Um, can you list about the top three things that you think is the original intent of the kingdom? And then you say that God, we're made in the image of God. Then can you list uh, just a few? three, four of the top things of the image of God. Because if we're if we're going to, I think if we're going to benefit, then we have to know what these things are. And so we have to actually delineate them and define them. And that I'm sure this is not all just for this one call, but we'd have to go into each one of them uh, maybe as a, as a per call. Because I think it's a it's more than can be chewed and swallowed in this amount of time. And one thing I would like to just add, just from my perspective of what I've heard so far, and that is about kingdom living. I think we think it's something that we have to struggle to obtain, but we were instantly given that when we were born again. As it says in Luke 17, 21, he said, people will say 
the kingdom is over here or the kingdom is doing this. He said, no, the kingdom is within you. So if the kingdom is within me, then I must get that kingdom out of me. And so I was talking to some kids at the boys club about a week ago, and I was talking to them about the, the yield sign that we see in the street. Um, Romans 616 says that we should yield our members, servants to righteousness. That yield sign in the street says that there's something coming and I should yield the right of way to that thing. That thing is already going. It has the law with it. It has the power with it. Regardless of what I think of it, I have to allow it to go. When inside of me, I don't have to drum up the kingdom. It's trying to get out of me. I simply have to yield. It is as simply as simple as not lying when I know I shouldn't lie, not uh, any of those things that we would consider unrighteous relationships with our fellow men, uh, brothers and sisters, and those things that are unrighteous, Paul says in that same verses, they lead to uh, sin, which is, you know, unrighteous relationship with God. So uh, if Pastor Mark or Corey can give me some understanding of what is involved in the original intent of the kingdom and what is the image that we are made in. Thanks. Excellent. 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 Thank you so much for that question, Brother H. And we'll give it over to Pastor Mark, Corey. Anyone want to jump in there? Go for it, please. Yeah. And it, and it was specifically directed uh, to Pastor Mark. Let me touch on a few things Excellent. and make sure that we got that. Uh, okay. powerful, uh, what you're what you're sharing with us, uh, Adrian, what you're what you're asking is, is, is very spot on. Uh, so specifically what he's asking, uh, Pastor Mark, is the top three things that you would that you would say are the of the original intent, which we mentioned the original intent. But what top three things would you would you actually say uh, is the first one? So if you don't mind, I, I'll just leave it at that. And then once you're done answering that, we'll go to the uh, top three things as far as the image of God that we're talking about. What were you going to say, Emerson? No, no, no. Go ahead. Go. Pastor Mark, go. Fine. Yeah, Pastor Mark. He's asking the top three things that you say uh, as it concerns the, the original intent of God. What would you say those things would be? Well, you know, that that's an excellent question, by the way. It's good to hear your voice, uh, Adrian. Always uh, delighted to, to see you and to talk to you. Um, so, the, the top three things that that's a that's a difficult question to to answer. However, I will attempt to do so by saying this: in Genesis chapter two and verse seven, it says that when God made man, He formed him out of the dust of the ground and He breathed into us the breath of life. And so then. What is life? Uh, because uh, in creating us in his image and likeness and forming us out of the dust of the ground and investing himself in us, uh, I guess the question we ask is, what is he? Uh, and, and, and what is life? And what is life that he breathed into us? Uh, he breathes himself in dust. He breathed his spirit in dust. And so if I must narrow it down to three things, I would say it is his character, that he breathed his, his character, his nature into us, that we are essentially made to reflect and to be as God is in character and nature. When I say character and nature, I mean the cool, full complement of our what we do, what we say, why we do it, what our motivation is. My wife was just nudging me and saying, you know, we talk a lot about, about what, you know, we are we do and say with regard to the kingdom, but it's also our motivation. And so uh, number one, I would say for foremost, it is his character. It is his very nature. Uh, that was his intent. Uh, and of course, when man fell in the garden, what he lost was the nature of God. And so that nature had to be restored. And that's what Christ came to do uh, in what we call the, the born again experience. Number two, um, 
God is uh, all knowing. He is wise and full of discernment. And so I believe that he intended for us and he invested in us and created in his own image and likeness a discernment that is fed, fueled, taught, informed, motivated by his wisdom, his knowledge, and his understanding. So then I would say the wisdom discernment of God, that our perspective, uh, we are created to have God's perspective. We look at things the way God looks at them. We see things the way God sees them. And when Adam fell in the garden, the temptation of Satan was that he knows in the day that you eat of that tree that you shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Well, they were already taught by God. The only thing they had, uh, quote unquote, to gain was independent discernment, a different perspective that came from another source and that was wholly their own. And so when man fell, he lost God's perspective, God's discernment, God's wisdom, God's knowledge, God's understanding. And then the third thing I will say of God, we know God is omnipotent. He is all powerful. And so then the third thing that God intended was for us to live connected, fueled completely and wholly by his authority, his power, and his resources fully supplied in every way by him. That's the simple truth of what Jesus taught in St. John 15, when he says, I'm the vine, you are the branches, and my father is the husband. And he said, uh, abide in me, uh, it, for without me, you can do nothing. We were not created to do anything apart from him, we were not to try to be anything apart from him. We were not created to live with any discernment and perspective apart from him, nor to live with any sense of our strength and ability and resources apart from him. So to summarize, and I, I don't mean to go on and on, but just to summarize, if I must give three things, it is his life, and as far as my concern, his life is his character, it is his wisdom and discernment, and it is his authority, his power, his resources. That's Excellent. awesome. And just for the sake of time, I, I want to make sure, uh, I know you're about to say that, say something, Emerson, but I do want to give Pastor Mark a chance to answer the second part of that question, because I know that we would all benefit from it so that we can continue to open this up and see if there's anything else. But the second part of that question was, what were the top three things? Uh, as far as we mentioned the image the, the image of God, what would you say that those top three things are that we should be focusing on as far as your perspective, as far as the image of God that he's trying to get back to us? Well, again, uh, I, I kind of wrapped the, the, I kind of wrapped the two of them up all in one. Uh, in, in, you know, the three or four things is we should be focused in walking the character of God and, and, and embracing uh, that I'm created in the image of life. No matter what's happened to me, no matter what I've done, no matter how I was born, what I screwed up, how I failed, what happened, God's original design and intent was for me to bear his image, which is his character, his nature. Everything that God is, the purest of all that God is, is how I was made in my essential nature and character. And that was I was created for. And that's what Christ came to restore and to have that fruit of his nature and character in me. And then again, you know, secondly, uh, it, it is the wisdom of God. We see things from God's perspective. We talk about faith, but faith is simply seeing, agreeing with God, seeing things like God sees them and thinking what God thinks about things and saying what God says about things. That's exactly what Jesus did. He said, what I hear the Father say, that's what I say. What I see the Father do, that's what I do. And that's what we're called to. And then I talk about authority and power uh, that, you know, 
uh, again, the image of God is one of power. He is all powerful. There's nothing weak about God. The Bible teaches in Colossians chapter two and verse 10 that we are complete in him. And so uh, the, the, you know, the, the, the fourth thing, if I were to bring a fourth thing in, uh, it is completeness, it's wholeness. I, I wasn't created to be broken, to be divided, you know, uh, to live in John, Romans chapter seven, what I would do, I do not, and what a good I would do, I do not, and what I would not do, I do. That is not how I was made, and that was not how I was created. I was created to be a complete and whole being, just like God, my whole spirit, soul, and body preserved, whole, complete, and blameless, as the Apostle Paul says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 23 and, verse 20 and 24. And quickly, I, I just want to put this in here. When I talk about completeness, I'm talking about completeness in every dimension of my life, spiritually, mentally, emotionally, physically, financially, and socially. I don't have to conceive brokenness, incompleteness, wholeness, a lack of wholeness in any of those areas that I am made to be complete, just like God, fully resourced in every area of my life, just like God. Amen. Um, Excellent. Let me let me jump in on that real quick. And I just want to add to that the image of God real quick. The image of God to me is this, the spirit of God. God is a spirit. Therefore, guess what? I am a spirit. I don't have a spirit. I am a spirit. Why am I am a spirit? Because I'm made in the image of God and the image of God is a spirit. Those that worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. I am a spirit. And so therefore, as Pastor Mark said, guess what? There is one third of me that's perfect. And that is my spirit. My spirit is perfect, brother. I mean, perfect. Why? Because it's the spirit of God. So that's my take on the image of God is my spirit. And that's who we are. We're not we don't have one, but that's who we are. That's why I must eat spiritual food. I must stay connected with God spiritually. Our carnal mind does not understand what spiritual things. So it's in spirit. So excellent. Brother. Excellent. Uh, OK, great. And for the sake of time, we're moving right along with this. Corey, do you have anything you want to put in here, brother? Please go ahead. No. Anybody? anybody yeah, I, yeah, I don't want to add anything. I just want to make sure I, I am given the opportunity to open this up. So, Adrian, excellent uh, uh, question. And I want to make sure I touch on what, what a couple of things he said about this this yield sign. He said that he actually shares with young some young, young men that he actually uh, uh, sharing with and the power of that already being on the way. Right. You just you just have to get out of the way. Right. It's already on its way. And, and, the, and the power of what he said about the kingdom of God being within us. So it's about unleashing it and or allowing it right, yielding to it, allowing it to actually manifest and come out of our lives. So I, I know that it's just it's a wonderful things uh, that, that that I'm able you know, to get out of that, uh, trying to get it out of us. Uh, uh, and they talked about this, uh, this unrighteous relationship, which is what sin is. And I, I just love a lot of things that you that you had to say and thank you uh pastor mark but i do want to open this up uh is there anyone else again that would like to have a comment question there's a lot that's been uh been thrown thrown out on the table today or tonight but i want to make sure i'm open this up anyone like to comment question anything about anything that we've been saying or to to comment about the question that we talked about uh, uh, originally which is is there a difference between uh preaching Jesus and, and preaching the message that Jesus preached. And if you want to share anything about that or what you've heard, I do want to make sure we can hear from uh, other people. And I know Lionel, you're out there. If you'd like to say something, Keith, you like to say something. My wife's out there. Uh, Beverly, you're out there. So I just want to make sure we are open this up. The floor is open. Hey, hey, this is Adrian. Um, I, I do want to just uh, say something about the original tenth of the kingdom because if i if mark says we take it back to the beginning then i would say that that listening you know at the conversation i wrote down these three things and that is that the original intent of the kingdom is fellowship with god because that's what god when he created adam and eve we had fellowship with him and he walked with them and i believe we he has done that again and bring us through with Jesus back to him. He also gave us dominion over life 
that's even over our own life, over our vices or whatever our problems are. He, through the the new birth, he has given us dominion over that, but not only over our life, but all life on earth and including the elements. And that's a whole nother story as to why man ha has so much uh, knowledge to be able to cre create so many things. And the third thing he gave us is the ability to procreate meaning procreate another human with, with abilities and the ability to have life and to have that relationship with God. No other mammal or animal on earth has that. And what I see as the image of God, I see there's three things that are the image of God. That is knowledge, wisdom, and then understanding. And knowledge is all about the what. And for me, wisdom is all about the how. And the understanding is what I call when because I can have plenty of knowledge and because, and wisdom is simply the application, the correct application of what I know. And then, but understanding, because he tells us in Proverbs and all that getting, get understanding. We think wisdom is the principal thing, but actually it's, it's understanding, which is the when. Because you remember the disciples said, let us call down fire from heaven because they weren't listening to Jesus. He said, you don't know which, what spirit you are of. They, they, what they said was correct and the application of it was correct, but the when, this was not the time to do that. So the image of God gives us those, those three things. But what ties it all together is what brother, what brother Mark was saying about us being in the vine and what Emerson was saying was about having the spirit of God being connected to him, God in that manner. Because it is, as Paul says about the gifts, yeah, you can have all kind of gifts, but it's the spirit that operates those things and they operate on God's timetable and they operate on, under God's perspective and under God's plan. So without adhering to uh, maintaining the intent, right, which is to fellowship with God, if we break that, or we start this, uh, well, just this avowing our relationship any any break in that um it, hello it yeah i'm sorry the call came in cut it cut it but um uh, but anyway if we break that original intent it is it is impossible it is for us to then project that image so i must as as you guys mm -hmm. were talking from the original i must maintain that original intent at all costs i must protect that you know like like the word says, I must guard my eye, right? Guard what goes into my heart because out of this becomes the way I operate. So uh, we cannot uh, maintain that image that God is trying to get out of us that we're trying to yield to without keeping to the original and intent, which is staying connected to that fellowship with God. Thanks. That's right. Excellent. Man, let, let, let me say something real quick here because we're about to come to close, I'm trying to keep it close to eight, brother. It's almost impossible to keep this close to eight. You brothers are on this line tonight, and we're here. And let me tell you something. Now I understand the scripture. Revelation has been given to me. Why those brothers turn the world upside down? Because we have so many mighty men of God on this line. We're trying to keep this thing to an hour. I know we are. Bless our hearts. But it's almost impossible. You're going to have to go back and play this again and again and again. Because in this hour here is just some impactful, life-changing revelation knowledge has been given here. So uh, Mark, Pastor Mark is trying to put something together. Uh, each and every one of you brothers on the line, we're going to need you there. We're going to need to hear from you. And we're going to set it up that way because Pastor Mark has this thing has been given to him. It's called All the King's Men. We plan on our first one kicking off in Huntsville, Alabama. So I just want to plant that seed uh, each in each and every one of you all. And so we need this. What, what, what happened here tonight, brother? I am over here. on. I'm on 10, boy. I mean, I'm on 10 over here. So, oh my God, my God, listening at this. And so just this 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 setting alone, just I, I can imagine the impact when we all get together and be able to sit around to all the king's men and begin to sharpen one another. So uh, I'm going to begin to shut this thing down. Uh, Corey, we're trying to stick to eight. Like I said, please, uh, I hope we can have a part two of this session. But I keep saying repeating from last week, but well, we got to continue this one. So I'm hoping everybody can get together again. We do this every Sunday night at seven o'clock. Corey has a program that he does on Thursdays at seven, uh, which is a sister to, to, to this sister, sister and brother thing here. Pastor Mark is on the air on Thursday nights at uh, what time, brother, is that? What time is that? We're we're on at uh, 
seven Central Time. Central Standard Time. Okay, and how and how do they, how do they how will they uh, get in, get that, Pastor Mark? What do they need to go to your site or something? Get, give us a real quick. What what do they need to do to get in touch with you? Well, uh, you can go to you can go to our page at connected church dot com on Facebook. Uh, we post them on YouTube, uh, and if you go to our YouTube page or Facebook, like and follow us when we come on the air. Uh, and for that. Uh, connected church midweek and connected strength. Uh, you'll get notices uh, when you come online. Of course, all of them are all posted now on YouTube. We have several hundred uh, what we call video on demand that you can just go right to YouTube and okay. get. But uh, you can also connect with us through Facebook Zoom, and other means. Okay, wonderful. Listen, I'm going to keep going, but I'm going to let Corey close us out because. Corey, we want you to give the address to your Thursday night uh, programming. And uh, but like I, again, I said, brother, we have something upcoming with Pastor Mark with all the Kings men. I'm hoping Pastor Mark can join us again next week. Uh, his his lovely wife Ramona. Let me tell y'all something. There is something good that comes out of Michigan, and it's Ramona Burroughs. And so let me tell you, that's the only thing I've known that's good that's come out of Michigan is his wife sitting right next to us. So other than that. I don't know very much, but yes, there okay. is something. Good. You hear me laugh here. <laughs> <laughs> you can so, hear my mind for you too. Go ahead. What'd you say, sis? What'd you say? Hey. I said, y'all okay for Ohio people too. It's all good. Okay. In the- <laughs> All right, that's, that's our inside joke. Hey. But listen, I'm, I'm my, my wife said I got I got to say something about her. I got to say something about my wife. She's gonna kick my butt if I don't. She's from oh, okay. Michigan we're, we're too. Let you lie now. Let she me said, just I say, say something. <laughs> okay, yeah, you y'all better listen. Baby. And mine too. And I, as a wisdom, I, I would do the same thing too. But listen, let me say this real quick, brother Adrian. Thank you so much, brother. You are the missing link that we need, bro. The Bible tells us to gather ourselves together, even the more so as we see the day approaching. We need to gather ourselves together even the more so, brother, not less. Brother Adrian, just thank you for your, your comments. Your, 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 everything you said tonight was just powerful and so needed, brother. We need one another like never before, brother. So please, you all join us again at 7. And then, uh, Corey, I'm turning to you, and then you give it to Lionel, and then we'll close this thing out. Corey, take it from here. Love you guys. Um, that's, that's awesome. This has been beautiful. I do want to make sure I'm, I'm specifically given an opportunity. I would love to hear uh, from Sister Mar- Ramona, uh, we don't get many opportunities. This is not a men's call. It's not a men's Bible study. The breakout session That's is for, right. for anyone. I want to make sure I'm saying that clear. So what I, the way I would like to end this is I want to uh, see if my wife, I'm not sure she's able or willing to say something, but I want to allow her to give any comments uh, or anything that she would like to share before we end. Ramona, I'd like you to, to go. Uh, and then if there's someone else that would like to say something, want to do that we have enough time to be able to allow that so ramon if you don't mind uh just share with us anything you'd like to share uh about tonight or just anything that's on your heart i would love to hear from you sure it's a good just an awesome discussion I'll, I'll piggyback on what what pastor mark my mark was saying tonight um in terms of the top three things and really starting off with the character of god you know when we talk about kingdom, there's so many blessings and so many awesome things in the kingdom of God that you could get so focused on. I need to do this or say this, do this or say this. And really going back and thinking about why do we do that and making sure that that's first and foremost. There's so many different times in scripture where whether you went to uh, how Lucifer was, if we use a bad example. Uh, before heaven, all of the blessings, all of the things that he had upon him, but inequity was found within him. Or if you look at um, the Pharisees, going back to your original question that you talked about, um, them having the law and having information in front of them that was related to scripture, but not having a heart for the things of God. So they had with them the word that foretold Jesus' is coming, but people of his day could not recognize him. Um, or you look at, um, I had another example. That slipped my mind. It comes to me. But the point I'm making is that the things of the kingdom, you know, we're made in his image and we're made in his likeness. 
but we're not seeking those things that he does and he and that he says separate from him. It always is about being like him and doing things like he does so that it doesn't uh, turn to be a bunch of steps, you know, and my, is it two steps of this or two steps of that, you know, reminding us that really it's relationship. It's about just being like my father and doing it just simply because this is how he does it. That's kingdom living and everything else follows. Excellent, excellent. Yeah. So, so, so thank you so much for, for sharing that. It's just wonderful. I love to be able to hear more. And the thing is, I, I have to uh, be uh, very uh, aware uh, the time constraint sometimes for, for individuals, uh, Pastor Mark, Sister Ramona, you guys already have tons of stuff that you have going on. So to be able to, to make time to come in live is, is really important. So we appreciate it. So anytime you can, we'd love to have you. Just want to make sure that you know that, that you're more, more than welcome you have to have your voice uh, be heard, heard here. We want to say thank you for that. And my wife, she's not able to speak, uh, but she did give Matthew uh, chapter 6, verses 9 through 13. Also, Ephesians chapter five, verse number one, and she says the uh, of the kingdom and how we are to respond uh, to God. And uh, she says she's not able to speak right now, but she wanted to make sure uh, that she did, you know, let everybody know she's listening and she appreciates what's going on here. Uh, Lionel, if you don't mind, I'd like to see if there's any comments that you'd like to share as as we're as we're uh, finishing up tonight. I don't have anything to add, but I will. I will say this: that I really enjoyed tonight. Um, my, me, and my family, right now, we're sitting at the table. We're all together at the table, and we're listening to this program, which is a wonderful thing to have my family here to, you know, to listen to it. You know, so I, I just thank you guys for doing what you're doing, and I just can't wait till the uh, the recording comes out. I'm really excited to hear it again. It was so much to take in that I know I missed a lot. But so I just can't, I can't wait till the recording comes out because I, I got to chew this again. I got to have it again. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah. So let me say something real quick. Mm -hmm. Lino, and I just want to shout out to Lino and his family, a mighty man of God, mighty man of God. So blessed to meet him through Corey. Uh, I tell you, each and every one of you brothers, man, I can go on and on about it, but you guys are just, I mean, awesome. Corey, go ahead, brother. <laughs> That's awesome. And, and I agree. That's what makes it difficult, man. Uh, Emerson, you've been, such a great impact uh, for me, Pastor Mark, and, and everything that, that you've been able to, to, to impart into us. And then uh, Lionel, I know we talked earlier, and sometimes you don't know what your in, in, input is, but you, I mean, you're just a sponge. I mean, sometimes we want to get some things out to people and we want them to receive it, but then they just don't. And for you, it's like, you're really hungry for God. It doesn't mean you take everything and that's good. You prove it and you decide if it's for you or not, but you're actually listening and then what, what, for what you do believe, you put it into practice so it's just a powerful thing to be able to have a friendship with you and thank you and like like you said your family is there with you so we want to celebrate you there in front of your family you have a great father uh, if you're listening uh, ava nova uh brandy you know you see the transformation that's going on with your husband so we're just happy to be a part uh, of that and get, be able to see it with you so thank you so much mm -hmm. and there are some more than one good thing that came out of michigan i know the so line had to make sure you said it brandy no 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 hold on now my wife oh. is another with the case oh. <laughs> Too. Okay. Well, yeah. I'm sorry. That's all right. That's all right. You oh, know what? Yeah, you got you have to put his dukes up. You're gonna get you're gonna get us in trouble, man. So yeah. I'm sorry. So, yeah, Ramona, my bad, yeah. Bro. There's some there's some good right. stuff. Yeah, some good stuff. If nobody says that if, if nobody else can say anything, we know that at least two very good things, two. Great things came, out of, came out of Michigan. So that's that's awesome. That's right. uh, and we that's have Keith. Uh, I wanna I wanna make sure that if there's anything, I know the connection was a that's little bit uh shaky but i want to make sure if you're able to to be able to uh to say any anything you'd like to say before we actually uh, close out for tonight oh, uh, i don't have anything to add uh, i think uh it was really it was absolutely put and i know that you have more uh, to share uh and expound on what we'll share tonight uh, i the only thing i can say tonight is is that um I enjoy eating at the table, you know, at the, you know, eating, eating bread at the table, and, and I say keep it up. Uh, it's good bread. Um, powerful. Powerful man of God. That's Keith McCoy. I know his connection is kind of bad, everybody. Yeah. It's, we can't really hear you, but Keith, you're breaking up. But Keith McCoy, real quick, 
we go back from, from, from 1989 together, uh, a part of the McCoy family, a mighty family of God coming out of the big city of Troy, Ohio. Now that brother's international. He, well, I call him the bishop, and he travels around the world proclaiming the word of God, always has since 1989. Very good friend of mine. So praise God for you, brother. Go ahead, Corey. Awesome. Awesome. Well, I don't have anything else to add. If it is a case where you are interested in, in learning more about you know, the kingdom of God, then we uh, do our reunited uh, broadcast. It's a class setting um, every Thursday at seven o'clock. So it's seven Eastern Standard Time. Uh, all those recordings are available either on YouTube or you can go to the website and uh, victory and the kingdom of God dot com. You can pull that up. Uh, the breakout session specifically, the, the messages will be available there under the breakout session page. So if this is something that you feel like you've got and received something from, uh, then I highly encourage, you know, share that with someone else uh, to be able to, to allow them to come in. And originally when, uh, you know, me and Emerson talked about some things we want, felt like God would want us to do, I was thinking about a, a, addictions when we thought about, you know, breakout sessions. But uh, the reality is, is there's so much to break out of. It's not just about a, a, a so-called drug, you know, alcohol or, or, or cocaine or some type of pill. Uh, religion itself and, and, and the bondage of, of, of religion, the bondage of, of a, a misplaced identity or identifying yourself, ourselves in some other way other than God has, has done that. All those things are things we need to break out from, you know, so it's a case where uh, I, I know that these sessions are very, very vital uh, for what we uh, need to do in moving forward. You know, all of us are impacting people's lives in our workplace, in our families, in our communities, you know, all over the place. Like, it's all we're doing is just sharpening each other up, you know, and really just helping to strengthen each other so that we can go out and continue to do the things that God is laying uh, on our hearts to do. And I really know the kingdom of God is a huge part of that. And we talked about the original intent of God. And, and what I, I truly believe is that there's a reason why Jesus said in Matthew 6 and 33, seek first the kingdom of God and all of his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. It's not a, a request. It's not a suggestion. It is a command coming from our king. So in my, in my heart, I really do believe that everything he intended for us to receive and have is packed in the kingdom. And it's our job uh, to be able to, to allow the Holy Spirit to unpack those things and allow them to manifest. And I, that's the reason why when I was ta actually taking some notes uh, about what, what, what Brother uh, Adrian was saying, it's powerful. And that, I really do believe that thing is, uh, is, is, is uh, was it scratching and crawling and get out? It's trying to get out. Like that kingdom is is in us trying to get out. So I really appreciate that. Emerson, something you was gonna say? Yeah, look, look, hey, brother Adrian, is it, is it okay if I give your number to brother Corey? Uh, 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 is that okay? Oh yeah, sure, yes sir. Great, great. And again, I just want to say one thank you so much, brother Adrian. Brother, you don't know, man. You you just man. I'll tell you what, just tickle pink over you, but you you're just powerful, man. Yeah. We need you on here, brother, much as possible, much as you can. Join us again next week, everybody, please, everybody, if you can, join us again next week. I think we do this thing, brother. As again, I said one more, one last time, I understand why those brothers back in the day turned the world upside down. It's because of things like this, the spirit of God having, moving his way, giving us wisdom, revelation, knowledge, uh, keys to everybody. Like now, I mean, on and on. So listen, love you guys. Corey, go ahead and close us out, bro. Okay, okay. Well, I'm I'm done again. So so thank you so much. And what I was uh, just just making sure I could say is what uh, Adrian said about it, wanting to get out of us. That's the reality of it. And it's for us to participate in that yield. <laughs> that's powerful, man. I mean, that's the reality of it. I mean, and here's the thing: the kingdom is here, and it's moving. It's a fast train. So we can yield to it, you know, or, or we can choose not to and get run over and miss it, you know. So it's our choice to decide what we want to do with that. So. With that being said, thank you for joining us for another breakout session. Uh, what are you going to say, you, uh, Emerson? Thank you so, so much to the Burroughs. Thank you, my very, very, very good friend, Pastor Mark and his wife. Thank you all so, so much. I mean that. And thank everybody. Love you all. Go ahead, Corey. I'm, I'm done. Yeah. I ain't going to jump in no more. I ain't gonna <laughs> no, it's good. No it's good. Yes, it's good stuff. So, again, thanks, everybody. But, again, it's another breakout session. We look forward to, to seeing you again. Lord willing, uh, the recording will be up by the morning. So if you'd like to share that with individuals, you can. And then we'll be back in here again uh, next next week, Lord willing, same time. So, you know, just, just put that in your calendar. Uh, with that being said, have a great night. Love everyone. God bless. Good night.